to Social Suites ESG Go webinar. My name is Jessica Schlosser and I manage Social Suites business development. Social Suites ESG Go platform supports companies in taking their first steps in ESG reporting with intuitive software, expert sustainability consulting services to guide them on their ESG journey and templates to share their great progress with stakeholders. The platform is built around a core set of 21 ESG metrics defined by the World Economic Forum, which was specifically devised to be simple and easy to adopt. ESG reporting is simply collating all the great work companies are doing already into a succinct one-page template to grab the attention of stakeholders quickly and get the attention they deserve. For instance, to be a listed company, they would already be fulfilling most of the governance metrics. A mining company would already have fulfilled the environmental metrics to have its license to operate. It is certainly not reinventing your business while all of our members have experienced additional stakeholders and funding opportunities after kickstarting their ESG reporting. Today I'm joined by our head of ESG, Dr. Tim Seigenbeek Van Hoeklom, and Steve Morgan, a leading sustainability consultant, to discuss what TCFD is and why it's important to be aware of this. Throughout the presentation, please don't hesitate to ask questions in the chat box on the right and we'll respond at the end. Now I'll hand over to Tim. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Jess, for that, uh, for that introduction. And welcome, Steve. Good to have you. Thanks, Tim. Um, so what we'll do today is we're all going to talk about, for, for 20, 25 minutes, about the TCFD, so the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures. So we really want to understand throughout this workshop, and, and Steve is an expert in this in this area, so we're really, really glad to have him here to, uh, to help us make sense of this area. How is TCFD relevant for businesses and investors? How do those recommendations work? Why do we see TFCFP adoption globally really accelerating at the moment? Um, what do businesses have to do and when do they have to start with TCFD reporting? Some really kind of real life realistic considerations about TCFD, what it means potentially for you and your business. And then really we end with how do you get started with this? So basically, let's kick off with ESC Capital. Steve, can you tell us a bit more about you know, your business and the work you do around climate and TCFD. Sure can, Tim. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity to, to chat with uh, some of your network about it. Um, look, our business is uh, a corporate ESG advisory firm um, and we, we work at the intersection of better business and a better world. Um, and a lot of our work involves advising our clients on global ESG standards and frameworks um, and really helping develop um, a corporate level framework that is specific for their business um, that can help support them to achieve uh, their goals. Excellent. No, thanks. That's really good. So uh, great to have you here. And really the key thing that we really want to know from you really is what is TCFD? What is the task force? Uh, it's, it's a pretty complex, it's a mouthful. So TCFD, let's, let's stick with that. But, Tell us a bit more yeah. about, you know, where does it come from? What is it effectively? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think to, to really understand CCFD, it helps to understand and, and be aware of where it comes from. Um, and it was developed in 2017 by the Financial Stability Board or the FSB. Um, now, they're an international body that monitors and makes recommendations um, about the global financial system. And their, their mandate really is um, quite, a, quite a simple one, it's international financial stability. So some years ago, they identified climate change and, and the risks associated with that uh, as systemic risks um, for, to, to the global financial system. And I suppose they thought the best way to deal with it um, was to develop a set of recommendations for businesses and investors to be able to use, um, you know, to communicate uh, how, they're, how they're dealing with it. And I think one of the really important parts of it, uh, and it's a, it's a challenge in the, in the um, ESG universe, is um, that data needs to be comparable and, and consistent. And so um, these guys have really... Um, you know, led the charge and, and now provide um, that sort of global gold standard um, on climate-related disclosures. Excellent. So I really like that statement. It's more of the, the second form of the slide here. 
that this could be the larger impact on the environment, but the environment impact on the business. So what does that really mean? Yeah, so it means that there, there's a, um, a wrecking ball um, coming through the global business and investment communities um, by way of, uh, you know, climate, uh, climate impacts um, and that businesses need to respond to that and investors, you know, want to know uh, how those businesses um, are responding. So in that sense, could you say that TCFD is really not what you see with in terms of reporting, retrospective reporting, but more aim at the future. Absolutely, yeah. That's probably the the, the most difficult thing about this is that um, certain elements of TCFD are forward-looking disclosures, uh, and and um, no one's got that crystal ball, um, so that can can make it a a difficult process um, if you don't have the right expertise and advice. So why does it matter then? Why is why is TCFD important? Yep. Yeah, as you've as you've got there, it's it's really reshaping the world, and um, yeah, I think uh, when when the climate started changing, and, and more to the point when um, you yeah, know we realised why it was was changing, that the result of of of, of human factors um, predominantly. Um, the business landscape began to change and the investing landscape began to change and um, you don't need to look too much further than uh, the fossil fuel sector to see that you know assets are being repriced um, businesses are being repriced uh, industries are being being repriced um, and <clears throat> you know fundamentally there's a there's a shift in this foundation that um, the current, you know, current uh, economic prosperity has been built on, um, you know, and that's been a that's been a, a world where um, how we've built it and how we've powered it has relied heavily on on, on fossil fuels. And so, um, yeah, that as that that ground shifts, um, it brings a lot of risk, um, and and the TCFD is is really there, you know, to help businesses navigate those. Um, I think the other really important point to mention, though, is is that you know, and it is, it does have an investment lens, the TCFD, um, and whenever you get these kinds of changes um, of, of significance, they, they bring risk, but they also bring um, great opportunity um, for companies. And, and the TCFD tool itself, and the recommendations around it, um, can really help companies. Um, you know, navigate and explore some of the upside um, that comes with, with, with this, this climate shift. So, so really, TCP is really looking at what are those risk opportunities that's moving forward and how can you translate them into financial consequences? How are businesses doing that effectively? So is it really about looking at how a business can stay relevant and sustainable for the long term? Yeah, it's a good way to put it. Yep, absolutely. I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that. So from that perspective then, that sounds like it's very relevant, both for business but also for investors. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, it's it's a good way to, to split it actually. Um, I mean, for businesses, first of all, you know, it really provides a validated framework to embrace when, you, when you're planning how you're going to deal with with climate risks and opportunities, um, they they are um, quite flexible recommendations. And like uh, any ESG strategy um, or, or reporting process, you don't have to go from zero to one hundred in in the year one. Um, so it's a really good tool to to be able to to take those first few steps um, from a from a, a business risk management point of view. Um, and I think for investors, you know, really it's it's a window into in, into businesses. Um, it, it will provide comparable insight um, for for them as to how you know the company that they're invested in or considering investing in um, plans to respond and, and is responding um, to climate. 
So it is equally important for businesses to you know, understand where they are from a climate risk and opportunity perspective, as it is for investors who are investing and investing into a company. So, you know, it, it makes sense for both both types of um, both, both stakeholders to really make sure that TCFD um, is implemented. Yeah. So definitely. What that then really means is I think that TCFD part or it should be part of every PSD journey. And what we see now increasingly is that uh, throughout the world, TCFD is really one of the main ESG frameworks. It really focus around, of course, the E, the environmental, the climate side of, of things from a financial disclosure point of view. But it's part and parcel of a lot of ESG journeys, all the way from small to large. And in particular, if we look at the World Economic Forum stakeholder capitalism metrics, that ESG framework that consolidates the five kind of most well-known uh, voluntary reporting frameworks around ESG in one solid framework, which we've also used with our ESG Go product, we really see that one of the key core indicators out of the 21 indicators is ECFD implementation. So it, it really plays out there that whatever you're doing in your ESG journey at large, you should be thinking about environment, about climate, and as part of that, TC is one of the logical things to do. So if you see here, this is one of our um, you know, a dashboard in which we help companies work towards making those disclosures there. Um, there's some key elements there around, you know, what do you need to do? How do you need to, you know, navigate that process there? And I think it's a, it's a key point there that what you just said, Steve, is that it is not something that you do overnight. It's a process. It's something that you work through. It's something that really happens over, you know, the long term. Is that right? It's it. How long does a company generally take to do a full disclosure, full implementation of that reporting process? Yeah, look, you can put together a meaningful disclosure um, within the space of a couple of months. Um, the, the, the challenge, and I suppose I'm, I'm probably skipping ahead a little bit, um, you know, here is, is really in the... Um, the scenario analysis that, that comes with that. So that can take a bit more time um, to, to map out and consider, but uh, in terms of applying the tool to a business, um, yeah, you can you can work through that um, fairly easily within the space of a few months. Yeah. So how exactly are those, like we, we keep talking about this, you know, a reporting framework or, you know, recommendations, that's really how it's been, been framed a set of recommendations for companies to start implementing. Like, how does that all fit together? Yeah. Yeah, so this is a really good visual to, to be able to step through. Um, it, it, it starts from, from the outside and, and works inwards um, around these four thematic areas. So governance is, is the first piece of the puzzle, and it really, um, you know, in plain language, it's really what attention um, and what oversight um, exists within the business around climate risk and opportunity uh, and who is responsible for that. Um, um, and obviously, um, in working through that recommendation, um, if there isn't any oversight um, or any attention, then there's no one responsible and it's about um, you know, putting that in place. The strategy piece second up is is really the, the, the chunky work um, in, in, in the TCFD disclosures. And there's two parts to it. One is the, the actual impacts and how a company is responding to, um, you know, to actual, actual risks and, um, and, and current risks and opportunities is, is fairly straightforward. Uh, it's really the potential impacts that take a, a bit more work, as I referred to earlier. And, um, the TCFD recommend a scenario-based approach to this, um, but then that leads to the question of which scenario do you choose? And um, really, there's a, there's a number of, of uh, widely accepted different scenarios. Um, the base, the baseline scenario that the TCFD recommend is um, a two-degree scenario, um, which is obviously in line with the the Paris Agreement. So. Um, yeah, that is really mapping out what are the, the physical impacts 
um, what are the, the likely um, transition impacts that come from um, that sort of warming, um, and then being able to talk about, you know, from a strategic point of view, how the company is, is, is managing um, and working through those. So that brings you from governance to strategy, and then you start what type of metrics and targets generally do you need to disclose? Yeah, so the, the, base, the base level is um, greenhouse gas emissions um, and uh, scope one and two. Um, the TCF do, do recommend scope three um, if, if applicable, um, but I think in terms of getting started, developing that baseline on, on scope one and two is, um, is more than enough. Um, and then outside of that, um, for initiatives within the business, you know, to manage to manage risks um, or to um, you know actively explore and execute on, on opportunities, then um, you know that this is the opportunity to get some data down and, and in the framework. And um, you know what, as, as we know, what gets what gets measured gets managed. Um, so this is where it sort of ties together in the you know, the rubber yeah. hits the road. Yeah. So to speak. I think it's a really good like it's a really good overview of those layers you work through get to your to your implementation and your reporting up. So if we look in the news, um, we see there's a lot a lot happening around ESG. There's a lot on environmental. There's a lot even more on climate climate scenarios, climate crisis, action change. But throughout all that, we really see that TCFD adoption is really accelerating in the last months or even, you know, longer. You know, what does that mean? What is happening at the moment? Yeah, well, there's a there's a big meeting in, in Glasgow uh, starting this weekend that, um, you know, has certainly created some, some groundswell um, this year. Um, and don't forget it was delayed a year um, due to COVID. So, um, it's probably some pent up, some pent up expectations around uh, global policy that's that's um, you know creating some urgency around this. But you know, I think in general, the the to shift into the, the business world quickly, um, you know, the the focus on 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 emissions, on managing carbon um, is really is really developed. Um, um, more certainly, certainly more so than than regulation, I'd say at this point um, here in Australia. Um, but um, you know that that is really the, the the genesis of it. Is investors are, are demanding it? They see um, you know, carbon um, and, and other greenhouse gas emissions as huge financial risks um, to, to companies and industries. So they're, they're demanding it, they're asking for it, you know, and then outside of that, you've got support in different areas. There's a, a number of countries um, which have mandated it. Um, you know, our neighbours in, in New Zealand have done it. The, um, the G7 um, have endorsed it recently. So, and that, and that, that list is growing. Um, some of the NGOs and industry groups and investor groups uh, like the the um, investor group for climate change, uh, you went through the World Economic Forum recommendations earlier. So TCFD is quite central to a lot of these respected bodies' um, recommendations around managing this. And uh, when when uh, I last checked, I think that there was around two thousand six hundred, two thousand seven hundred supporters um, of TCFD globally, which accounted for uh, about $26 trillion worth of assets un under management. Um, so it's certainly um, certainly found a place. That's, that's pretty significant. That's uh, oh, yeah. So you already kind of, you know, flagged this. New Zealand and the first jurisdiction to make it mandatory for publicly listed companies. Um, we saw the you know, United Kingdom announced the same thing recently, and the G7 followed. What's happening here? What's happening in that space? And when does, you know, if you have a business, when do you need to start reporting effectively? 
Yeah, so at the moment it's it's I mean, it depends on where you're at, where you, where you are for for a start. But um, if we're talking about Australian business specifically, um, uh, a lot of people aren't aware that that ASIC in 2019 actually endorsed TCFD um, as the framework for reporting on climate risk. Um, if that posed a material risk to the business, so. Um, if your if your company falls into that category, or you know your investments fall into that category, um, you should already be doing it. Um, but you know beyond that, um, you can really you can clearly see the see the trend um, that's there. And and look, I, I think sometimes the best way to to answer questions is to is to ask more more questions. And um, there's a few that I would recommend people consider. Here and, and and they are, um, you know, is is our business in any way linked to global financial markets? Are we seeking investment uh, now or, or in the future, um, whether it be from a, a debt or an equity perspective? Um, are we in any way linked to global supply chains? Do we sell products that are likely to change, or the demand for is likely to change in, in the future as a result of climate change? Do any of our stakeholders have an expectation that we're responding to it? And that could be um, you know, even employees, for example. Um, or do we and do we see opportunities be being created through this global shift? Um, and should we think about how we can create value for our stakeholders through them? So yeah, really, if you answered if you answered yes to to any of those, um, then I, I think it really is quite clear that you should. Take the opportunity to get moving so on. So basically, if TCFD is not mandated where you are, to answer any of those questions with a yes or a potential yes, you better get started. Brilliant. Yeah. So, and I think that's the key thing here, and that goes for PSD one. Like we see there's a massive sense of urgency of need around building ESD credentials. And part of that process is just getting started with it. And that's really what we do with ESG Go and Social Suite. We help you to get started with ESG. But equally, part of the framework where we have is that TCF in there as well. And I think a lot of people think like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's a not a reporting requirement. Can we let that wait for a little bit? Um, we'll first do other things. Um, and I think one of the key things you can said, Steve, it's really kind of, you know, hits at home is that a lot of investors, the first thing on their mind is seeing the corporate level greenhouse gas emissions ready. They just want to see if you know what your scope of scope emissions are. Have you started that exercise? Do you, have you estimated that? Have you calculated that? And if you don't have it yet, they will ask questions. Why, why are you you're not yeah. doing that? And with DCFD, like with a lot of these things, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. But the key thing is, start running. So, yeah. I really, we're, we're getting close to the end, but I think this will really hit at home, hopefully. These, can you give us, and, and you know, run us through these examples here, like, get people think about like how would it matter for me as an investor as a business DCFD? yeah yeah like like a lot of esg elements um they're quite conceptual and so it really helps to to, to land them in some some examples some real life examples so the top two are really from an investment lens and um if thinking about the first one if you were um if you had capital to to deploy uh, and you're looking for for a return um, and there was a uh, an auto manufacturer um, that was 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 an option. Um, you know, would would you be prepared to invest? You know, or how would your understanding of how they were addressing the global switch to electric vehicles impact? Um, you know, what you're prepared to invest in in that business? And the question about metrics earlier, it, it sort of it. it comes into its own here because you'd be wanting to see some clear data around production levels of electric vehicles, number of models, um, projections on sales. Um, so I think that gives a really good insight into the power of TCFD for, for investors, for, for investors in, into potential investments. Um, and that's a transitional risk example. Uh, the next one's more of a physical risk example. Um, Quite simply, simply, if you're investing in a building that was was close to the sea um, and close to sea level, what would you want to know about the physical risks identified and how they're being managed? Um, 
you know, and this this happens in any significant infrastructure investment now. Um, you know, they they do um, provide um, you know information around sea level rise and um, the plans to to counter that and to manage that. Um, but importantly, you'd, you'd want the information. Um, and the last one is. Uh, and this is one, a lot of our work is in the resources sector, um, being based here in Perth. Um, and uh, some of my clients, a lot of, a lot of our clients are ASX listed entities, um, but there is huge supply chains that flow from those. And um, if you look at the mining sector, there's, there's been a, a swathe of net zero commitments made recently. Um, and if you, so if you ran a company that, supplies goods and services to it, um, you, know, you, you would be aware that part of those net zero commitments uh, and, the, and the movement towards that for these businesses will at some stage include scope three, you know, all their, all their supply chain um, emissions and how they're managing that. So if you're a, uh, a supplier of, of goods or, or services, you know, to a, to a mining company or a mining contractor, um, you know, or an explorer, um, then really, um, you know, you, you could be using TCFD to consider um, the scenarios that are likely to play out um, and how you need to, to manage that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks. Um, if you want to get started with TCFD, how do you, from that starting point, kick off? What are the first things to do? Yeah, simply get it on your agenda. Um, it, it must be it must be driven from the top. Um, so get get discussing it at board level. Um, and like like was mentioned earlier, and as is the case with ESG, often companies are doing more than they think. So uh, a gap analysis can be a, a good place to start. Um, look, the TCFD is quite well resourced. They've got quite a good website with a lot of different um, handbooks and tools. Um, so it's easy enough to, to spend some time there looking for assistance and, and guidance. Um, and don't try and do it all in, in, in year one. Um, and, and then the last of all is, is very true. It's gotta be a, a, you know, a requisite suitable approach for your business um, if you're a, you know, if you're a, a $40 billion company, um, then you've got significant resources compared to a $100 million company um, and, um, you know, work through that process with that, in, with that in mind. Which makes a lot of sense, yeah. And I think one of the tips at the, at the bottom there is that do you get a sense of all the things that are required here? Like, yes, if you've got the time, the resources, you've got someone to look into this, there's some great, like I said, great resources out there that make it simple, help you to work through this process. But sometimes you do get stuck and sometimes you do need someone who's done this before. If you want to do it quickly or if you really want to make sure you do it properly, get a facilitator, get someone who you know, has that experience to really make your process efficient, help map out a timeline. And you can really kind of yeah, work out what can you do, where do you need some support with. Um, and that's one of the key things we see that, you know, get started get started with ESG, get started with your climate disclosures and where you need help, ask for help. Because otherwise you'll just stop, you'll lose momentum and people will ask, you know, you started the journey, where are you on this journey? And it's key to demonstrate that ongoing progress. But that gets us to the end. So if you need help, Steve's there. ESG Capital does a lot of this TCFD work that really kind of offers streamlined, uh, streamlined ways to facilitate you to go through this TCFD reporting and really help you take you, you know, hand by hand, hand by, uh, yeah, by the hand and through a step by step plan. And if you're ready to start your ESG journey, so if this, you know, if ESG is on your mind, and if you really want to, you know, get get going with ESG. We have our ESG reporting platform, um, and that really offers you that World Economic Forum framework that we just flagged earlier on that in the presentation. That really includes TCFD reporting, but there's a whole range of guidance and templates. Uh, we have a, an expert team there that really advises and coaches you through, and there's a range of tools that we have to, to create visibility. So really making sure that what you do, you also get out to your stakeholders. So I'm just going to hand over back to Jess. Um, to if there's any questions she got in throughout the webinar, um, anything else that either Steve or myself can answer. So back to back to you, Jess. 
Great, thank you. Um, yes, I have one question. Um, I heard someone say that TCFD may be globally mandated at the upcoming UN climate change conference. Could this happen? Um, there's, there's certainly murmurs. Um, look, I, I think that it's, it's certainly the leading global climate reporting tool. Um, and um, I expect that there will be increased endorsement um, from you know, members of, of uh, members and supporters of, of, of COP next week. Um, will it be globally mandated? Look, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure at this stage, but I think that's that's where it's heading. Um, mm. Yeah, it would be fairly bold, but I'm sure. Um, yes, one day our days are numbered. <laughs> I have another question. Um, how does TFCD interact with the UN SDGs? Yeah, that's a good question. So one of the UN SDGs, uh, I forget the number off the top of my head, but is is climate. Um, and so really um, your know, action around TCFD would support your efforts um, against that specific UN SDG. Well, yeah, I would, I would add to that as well that the SDGs are global goals and global targets. We're all working together. So governance, companies, individuals, we all have these goals we want to reach by 2030. But how is the business community at large do we measure how we are contributing to those goals? And that's where frameworks like TCFD come in, in which you really disclose what you are doing to work towards that goal effectively. So the SDG is a goal where we want to end up, and that the, the, the RTCFD is one of the frameworks we use to make it transparent and open what businesses are doing. So they, they, they interact really nicely. Fantastic. Thank you. If anyone else has any additional questions that come to you later, please feel free to send me an email. I've also put in the chat a link uh, if you're interested in ESG reporting or discussing this topic further. Please don't hesitate to book in my calendar. It'd be love to, lovely to meet. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you, Steve, for joining us. We really appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, Jess. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.